Okay, thank you. Uh, I have some materials here, so you can have a look. This is uh, my recent work. Yeah? This, this is uh, what I'm doing. In, uh, this is for free. You can take, and these are like from previous years. If you can have a look, if you want to have a look, this I already introduced, and I will be talking about it. This is a book about uh, uh, the squatting and autonomous centers uh, scene in uh, Prague. And this is the interview book, you can have a look, and uh, I'm also talking about it there, but uh, these are all in Czech, so uh, unfortunately it's, uh, you know, we don't, we don't really have uh, English speaking or foreign uh, uh, audience, so we have no uh, need to publish in, in English, so uh, sorry for that, but... Uh, you can you can just there are many pictures so you can get your clue from the pictures you will find. Um, my my um, experience with uh, alternative art comes from uh, the period of the second half of eighties when I started to be active on the fields of underground culture in Prague, and uh, I think this is this is where. Uh, the, the, the cultural boom in 90s was generated from because uh, the, the underground uh, culture was already very well developed in Prague and uh, northern Bohemia especially and Pilsen and you know there were certain certain uh, locations but mainly Prague of course also Brno was quite active uh, where alternative art was already uh, produced in in very uh, serious and significant way, even if it was repressed very heavily by the uh, communist power. And uh, I was I joined the punk movement in the beginning of eighties, and uh, there was really a lot of lot of events happening uh, in the second half of eighties. Uh, I was talking on the lunch about it uh, uh, with the mates on the table, and uh, that we only late, uh, only lately we realized uh, from from the work of the uh, colleagues uh, historians that uh, many of these events that happened during uh, second half of 80s have been actually organized or uh, even supported by money from the secret services, from STB, uh, secret police, uh, because they changed uh, their strategy from uh, the times uh, at the end of 70s and the beginning of 80s when they were trying to repress all kind of uh, uh, so-called second culture. But uh, they realized that this way they are losing connection uh, to the... Uh, to the underground and uh, they changed the strategy so that they were trying to infiltrate uh, the punk movement especially and uh, they just hired many many agents amongst punks and they were um, feeding the, the, the punk scene with money so, so that they could uh, have concerts, festivals and similar events, and even uh, some people from Prague can remember that in the end of 80s, really like 88, 89, you would have official, or even 87 maybe already started, you would have official festivals of uh, rock and punk music happening in Prague that were organized by uh, official structures. So the reason was that they were trying to infiltrate and monitor what is going on in, in, in these fields of uh, unorganized uh, uh, youth, you know, because they, they, they knew that they are not able to uh, keep track of it. They are not able to uh, repress it anymore. So at least they, they wanted to have uh, good uh, knowledge about it. So um, this was, this was uh, a situation that uh, we were really having a lot of art events and we were not aware of it, that uh, it is really happening under, under the control of the state uh, uh, authorities. Uh, and only recently, really like the last uh, five, five years uh, backwards, 
we are starting to learn about uh, the circumstances. Anyway, uh, this was uh, very uh, good um, for like preparation time for the 90s because uh, many of the people from uh, the uh, underground and punk movement have been involved in organization, in bands, you know, in, 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 in alternative theater and so on. So then when the revolution came, uh, the scene was already there. And uh, in that time, I was uh, working as um, a journalist, mainly on fields of underground music. And I was writing to uh, many countries like United States, uh, France, Germany, and so on. I was writing reports from the Czech scene. So I was very well connected. And I started to bring um, uh, Czech uh, musical bands and later also alternative theaters to uh, Western countries, but also Slovakia, Hungary, but mainly to West, and bring in uh, foreign uh, artists uh, to Czech Republic. So I started to do a lot of tours, and there I realized uh, how developed is the autonomous scene in Western countries like Germany, Switzerland, Holland, Belgium, Italy, you know, everywhere you would have autonomous centrum or uh, centro sociale or some, you know, squatted places and so on. And uh, immediately in 1990, uh, this started to be attractive for Czech art scene as well. So the very first, uh, uh, what happened was uh, already in 1990, in Prague, uh, the big uh, event under the Stalin monument, where there was a huge anti-atomic uh, bunker, and this was just filled with art and uh, concerts and everything. And uh, as a backup of this uh, of this festival, uh, we were hiring a renting a building in center of Prague, and uh, there all the agencies and all the producers of art have been placed uh, from alternative scene and we're cooperating in one building under one roof, which was excellent because everybody knew each other and we could share experience, we could share contacts and everything. But this was actually the first thing which was repressed by the, by the new power uh, after, after the revolution. You know? so, so after the, all those years when uh, alternative culture was being repressed by the communism, now, when we had the, the free uh, society, finally, again, already in autumn 1990, there was the first uh, activity of the alternative art uh, repressed, and uh, uh, we were evicted from that building. So uh, that was like the sign that uh, we are not welcome even. This was like, I call myself a veteran of the lost uh, cultural war, and uh, uh, I'm retired already, you know, and uh, just uh, enjoying these talks and publications where uh, I'm telling their memories about the good times, you know, and I'm gardening, exactly, exactly, yes, yes. So, so, um, uh, but, but still, you know, in 1990, 91, 92, we believed I was 22, 23 in that time. So we believed that uh, we can really have own clubs and we can have uh, our art centers and we can run it ourselves, you know. And, and, uh, and uh, there was big euphoria for young people because it was us, the young people, the students who made the revolution, right? So, so the first year and two years and maybe three years after the revolution, there was a lot of support for uh, young people and we would even receive some money. And uh, when, when we came up with some initiative, like we want to make a gallery, we want to make a art space, we want to make cultural center, people were like, oh, wow, this is a great idea, you know, so let's talk about it. And yes, yes, you can have it, you can do it, you know. And uh, yeah, we can support some money, you know, and so on and so on. But already in 93 and 94, they realized that the young people can really do it and they really will run these places. And they got scared of it. And they really were frightened. Like, what is it? You know, we, we just cannot have young people do their stuff. You know, it's impossible. They just cannot do it themselves. We have to supervise them because they will take drugs and they will abuse 
children and they will eat uh, uh, our food, you know, and I don't know what, you know, and they will steal our jobs, you know, and now suddenly the young people became enemies and uh, had to be repressed. And uh, there were many initiatives you can find in the book. Many squatted houses like uh, uh, Zlatá Loď, the Golden Boat, uh, Ladronka, our Black Hand Center, um, many other places. And uh, the new regime really took strong action to repress it. If they, uh, if it was really illegal place, squatted, they would use police force. If it was legal place, like our place was, where we had regular contract, they would use uh, economical or legal steps to, to destroy uh, these places. And, uh, um, or, or places like Roxy, like Bunker, they would use uh, uh, reasons like uh, noise in the evening or, uh, I don't know, bad parking, you know, or, or, or dirt around the place and so on. So, so they were all the time pushing and pushing and pushing. And suddenly all these places like Bunker and our place and I don't know what else, many, many places have been closed one after another. And uh, basically in 95, 96, 97, you would have mainly all of these places closed. And by 2000, it was all gone. The only places that still remain is Roxy, but it became completely commercial, so you, you, you wouldn't have any space for alternative culture there anymore. And uh, Rock Cafe, which is the same, it's, it's just purely commercial place. You can rent it for really huge amounts of money. But uh, the places like uh, our place was where Roxy was in the beginning, where young artists with no name, you know, they could come and they could uh, have studio space, they could have uh, gallery space, they could have uh, rehearsal uh, room, uh, theaters could form their uh, performances and, and, and do their first presentations. Uh, and they didn't need to pay anything, you know, and they could even take the, the, the money from the box, which uh, they collected, and, and, and that was their payment. So this, this was already impossible. And uh, then I left Prague uh, in, in those years, around 2000, uh, and I moved to Bromov region, which is in northern, northern, northeastern, northeastern Bohemia, and... Uh, there, you know, it was it was village place really. Bromov has five thousand inhabitants, the town and uh, the the region around another twenty thousand. So it's really like like the whole region is like a small town, and uh, uh, we found old bureau there in Bromov town, and the bureau was empty, and there came this new. Uh, initiative to change the, the bureau into this art space again you know uh, there was a lot of enthusiasm and uh, in 2001 we opened the space and it was lasting until 2003 and then it was closed as well so that was like the, the last uh, uh, the last uh, initiative that uh, became really uh, nationwide and international that, that so many people participated, so many people joined, that we had uh, like 250 artists every year come in and uh, we, we had the, the summer festival which was lasting four months and for the whole time we had workshops and uh, lectures and, and big exhibitions where 40, 50 artists would be participating from Germany, Poland and Czech Republic because we are on this Czech, German, Polish uh, territory. So, so we were doing everything Czech, German, Polish, like the literary prize and uh, the, the crisscross exhibition and art workshops and uh, the, 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 the alternative, alternative theater performances and everything. So we were focused on the Czech, German, Polish uh, uh, relations, but not only, you know, we had artists from Israel, Japan, Russia, whatever, you know, and uh, then, then after after this after this was closed, and uh, we realized that already nobody really wants to support anything like this, because we had uh, uh, very very uh, the governments we had very uh, unfriendly to culture development, 
I, you know, I have to say one thing that since since nineties, I was very much involved on uh, uh, on uh, political scene. I was never a politician, but I was powerful activist in environmental and human rights activism. And I, I, I was, I had access to politicians, to ministers. I had access to President Havel and so on. And uh, I have to say one thing, you know, that in '90s we could very easily use this power of activism and get connected with ministers, with politicians in parliament, with the president. And we were really receiving very positive feedback from them for a very long time. And if things didn't work. I could, I could uh, within a week or two, I could sit in the minister office and I, took, I could talk to the minister and explain what, the problem to him. And it, if it was minister of interior, if it was minister of justice, if it was minister of uh, environment or minister of culture, it didn't matter, or minister of foreign affairs, we, we, we had access everywhere. And we could talk to those people and they would listen to us. And uh, by the end of 90s, this access started to limit and when Havel left the scene in 2003 or something it was gone you know and from 2003 further the political scene which was there to serve the people until that time and we could really do things through the politicians and it contains the politicians on the on the local level you know like the mayors and uh, county people and so on now it became closed. It really became like cartel, like a mafia cartel, which which is doing their own stuff. And you are not important. You have no access to the to the decision making processes. And if you have a trouble or you have an idea, nobody cares. Yeah. So, so this I started to realize since uh, like two thousand three, two thousand four, and further. And uh, this was the time when when uh, I realized that uh, for young people and uh, uh, non-established, alternative, free, independent art, it's just uh, in, impossible. You, ha you have to be covered by institutions or big investments, you know, like uh, Kunsthalle in Prague, for example, where you have huge amounts of money in, in, in your bag. Then you can do stuff. But if you are independent artist, and you want to do your stuff, uh, you have al almost no chance if, uh, if you don't want to do really like complete underground thing. And uh, another Sorry, thing Petra, is, can you wrap it up for us positively? <laughs> can, can you give us a positive mes message as yeah, a conclusion? No, no, yeah, yeah, I, I can. And, and, and one, one more negative which I, which I want to conclude is that, uh, uh, that, um, in those in those eighties, in the underground, and in nineties, you could send join movement. You know, you would not be alone if you do things. Even if you are activist or artist or whatever producer, you would be part of a movement. And this is also gone, in my opinion. But now, uh, since two thousand further, we really are on the peak of individualism, and uh, it's very hard to find allies for whatever you want to do. You know, so so um, I don't have I don't have a positive conclusion in my opinion because um, uh, I don't I don't see much uh, uh, much choice and much uh, possibilities and um, with with the government that we have now, for example, every minister of culture that we have now, and I'm in close touch with him actually. Uh, I don't see much future for independent art. You know, so. That's about my experience, and uh, sorry for <laughs> negative message. <laughs>